Hi, this is Sammy again. We're gonna continue with definite integral. So we're gonna do a couple of questions, stay tuned. So there you go. The first question is to find the definite integral of t squared uh, dt between sine x and zero. So um, I had the question first, so sine x to zero of t squared dt. So the integration of t squared dt is just gonna be t cubed over three. And the integral is between sine x and zero. So how we integrate t squared, basically you add one to the exponent and then you divide by the exponent plus one, which is uh, the three. So we added two, uh, we added one to two. So we get t to the three and um, over three cubed. Now let's say, if you wanna check if you did it right, then you have t cubed over three. You know, an integration is the opposite of, of um, derivatives. So if you take the derivative of this and see if you're gonna get this back. So we'll bring the three down, t squared. And you know what? We could just write this as one third t cubed. So you bring the three down and you still have the one third there. And you take away one from the exponent. So that becomes two and now three and three they cancel. We get t squared dt, which is that. So, you know, integrated that right. Now, once you integrate, and it's a definite integral. What you wanna do, you wanna sub in the upper limit right there, the zero into t. So you end up with zero cubed over three minus, then you're gonna sub in the lower limit, which is sine x. And then you cube it over three. And so what this gives me, this gives me um, negative one third sine cubed x. So now this is a g of x. The question they asked us to find the definite integral of t squared between sine x and zero. And then after that, they want us to do g prime of x. So once we find g of x, we do, we do g prime of that definite integral. So now, if I wanna take the derivative of this, I write the negative one third, and then I bring the three down. So times three, and, and then we take away one from the exponent. So it becomes neg negative three times three sine squared x. And the chain rule now we have to do the derivative of sine x, which gives us cos x. So let me just do this one more time. I'm just gonna take, if, if, if it's sine x, sine cubed x that I'm doing the derivative of, I'll bring the three down and then take away one from the exponent. And then I have to go to the sine x and take the derivative of that as this as well. So, and I'm gonna get cos x and that's how I get that. Now three reduces with the three, and this will equal negative sine squared x cos x. And your answer here is gonna be B, okay. Now here is another question of doing the definite integral. So now we, what we're integrating is between zero and two, that's the definite integral, x, over root x squared plus one dx. You know what, I'm gonna rewrite this. I'm gonna raise this, bring this on top. And you know, it's the square root means this to the power of one half. And when you bring it to the top, it becomes x squared plus one to the power of negative one half. So again, this on the bottom is the same as having x squared plus one to the power of one half. That's what the square root, square root is. And when you bring it up, you just make the exponent negative and you still have times x. Okay. And this way now what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the method of substitution to integrate. So, so we're gonna let, you don't forget the x now, let, uh, 
let u equal x squared plus one, then du would equal two x, the derivative of this, to the one dx. So to integrate this, um, we have the u, which is this, and the du, which is supposed to be two x dx. So you know what we're missing? We're missing two from here. So if you wanna match this and this with that, you have to add a two here. So just put a two there. But if you put a two here, you, put, you have to put one half outside because one half times two is one. And then if you multiply anything by one, you don't change it. So to make up for this two, when you're, making, when you're doing substitution in here, to make up for this two and throw it in here, you have to throw one half in there, and then this will match. So now what we have, we have this equals half integrate, I'm just gonna ignore the zero and two until I substitute back the x squared plus one for you and all that stuff. So x squared plus one, as I said, it's u, so I'm just gonna sub in u there, and it's to the power of negative one half. And the two x dx, it's du, so I'm just gonna sub du for that, so I, now I could integrate. And when we are integrating, the half stays there, but the u to the negative half, you add one to the negative half, so it becomes to the power of one half. And then you divide this by half. Okay, so whatever you get in here, you have to still divide by it. So what we do when we integrate, we add one to the exponent and we divide but whatever we get after adding one, we divide everything by that. So that's why we're dividing by half. Now, this half and this half will cancel and you'll get the integration of this is u to the power of one half. Now I'm gonna go substitute the x squared plus one and I'm gonna do my definite integral now. So that's x squared plus one. And you know, u to the one half is the same as square root of u, sorry, square root of u. So I'm just gonna throw a square root in there. And the integration here or the definite integral is between zero and two. So we're gonna go ahead and sub in both of these numbers and so the upper limit first, so we put in two, so that's two squared plus one minus, I'm gonna sub in the zero, zero squared plus one, which gives me that, it's gonna give me root five, and that's just gonna give me one. And so the answer for this is root five minus one, and that is right here, and that's the answer right there, okay. So that's it for today. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and please share with others so they could benefit. Thank you for watching again. Till next time, bye-bye.